Trace Kelly Dunn, welcome to An Actor Despairs. How are you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. It means so much. You're literally one of my all-time favorite actresses. There's a reoccurring theme on this podcast, the separation between good acting and great acting. And great acting is when no other actor could play that role. And moreover, when what an actor or actress brings to a role isn't on the page. And I've watched your career for so long. You know, I first discovered you in cold weather and then- Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm like an indie You're pretension. So You're so and bad. then uh, I look like, I, I, I reference actors and actresses to you all the time because watching you act, like you're so completely relaxed and methodically in character. And it's just so natural and poetic to watch that. <laughs> you're, you're too kind. Thank no, you. I, I mean every word of that. It's, it's so hard, you know, like th the key to acting is not to act and it's to be, but that's so hard for a lot of actors to understand that. And that's, I'm so curious that, you know, I talk about to you about North Carolina School of the Arts and how you got there. But before we do any of that, let's start at the beginning. Where did you grow up? Okay, I grew up in Utah and then I moved to North Carolina in high school. Okay, so you did like first part of your life there and then like the last chapter pre-college mm -hmm. there? Yes, so like college, um, I also went to college at North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem, but I went to high school in Wilmington, which is oh. when I got into acting. Because in Utah, my career aspirations, I wanted to be a park ranger. I was no super outdoorsy, super shy, like didn't want to, I, I definitely wasn't interested in like being on a stage ever until I moved to North Carolina <laughs> for Talk some reason. I so, how, like, how, were your parents artists? Like how did this, all, like how did the park ranger thing happen at first? They met in, a, my, my mom and dad actually met in, a, in Zion National Park. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they, my dad, I, like we grew up camping a lot and, 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 you know, doing outdoorsy stuff, skiing, stuff like that. So I was just really into that. And then, um, you know, 15, 15 moved to North Carolina, that kind of went away. And I what, think I just needed another outlet, so I got into theater. When you were in North Carolina, was that during the uh, the One Tree Hill time, like when North Carolina was Atlanta for a minute? I'm gonna out myself at how old I am. It was Dawson's Creek. <laughs> it was Dawson's Creek. Nice, amazing. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, so I was like doing. Yeah, I was. I was. You would have been like that. Would have been way before. I mean, how? Yeah, you would. I'm turning been, 31, so you, you know. Were probably like five, I guess, or six when Dawson's Creek was on. No, I was a little bit older than that because I remember Joshua Jackson being in the Skulls and that, that I was like excited that he got that role. And The Beak, you know, classic Katie Holmes as well, you know. I, I, I watched the show, so I remember it. So I had to have been older. They probably had a reason. That probably had, a, had an impact on like why. Because it was just, there, was, there were movies and TV shows being shot here and we would see them around town. So yeah. I think that was actually my first, now that I'm thinking about it, that was my first job. I had like two lines on Dawson's Creek. No they way. Cut. They cut when I got there. They were like, we don't need these lines anymore. Oh, so it was like a co-star? Yes, it was like a little co-star. So they just put me in the background and I had to do this really basic thing and it was really uncomfortable and unpleasant, but, <laughs> but I still got paid. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, first. and did you get in the union? I got the, no, because it was, what... What was it called when you- Taft so Hartley only, or whatever? Uh, yeah, I yeah. think I had the option, but I don't think I went with it. I don't know. No, I wasn't in the union until after college. I didn't, okay. Yeah, I didn't join until, I was a must join. The first job I think that I was a must join was actually, I think it was United 93, I think. Great I film. Think I could be wrong, but I think yeah. that's what it was because they were, it was like we were had to go overseas and they were like, freaking out because I hadn't joined the union yet. Well, well, talk to me. Was that, was that a tough transition for you, moving from Utah to North Carolina and having to kind of restart there? Yes, it was. It was. But North Wilmington is such a cool place. Yeah, um, it's the Utah best. Is, you know, great for outdoorsy stuff, but culturally it's a little bit... And a beach? You know, yeah, there's. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I'm actually in Wilmington right now. Oh, you are. Yeah, we kind of relocated here. Love it. <laughs> like about a month ago. Um, and we're also, yeah, it, it's been it's been awesome. I think you know it's just with remote work and not a whole lot of like stuff happening in New yeah. York. It makes sense to stay there. It's just not you know small no. apartment and not a whole lot to do. So. Yeah, I'm here in Brooklyn now. It's depressing, so you're not missing much. <laughs> right, like we were there for a while. Like we most of this year, we haven't really been there. So we just figured let's go somewhere 
nice and where the weather's good and like wait out the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think you need to help turn that state blue. So hopefully, you know, Yes, let's, I've been doing that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure that part, like that's part of the re reason is I've been basically a full-time volunteer. That's my acting job now. <laughs> Amazing. How's that going? It's really fun, actually. Yeah. It feels like working on a movie because you just meet all these people. And, and it must be drama filled, you know, because like the polling place can be a, a pretty fraught environment. <laughs> yes, it, it, the, we're handing these out a lot, blue ballots. <laughs> wow, amazing. I love it. Um, it hasn't been drama filled, thank God. It, ha it hasn't, thank God. All right, we cool. Thought, we anticipated it to be drama filled, but it hasn't been. It's been pretty little things coming up but not like the stuff i think that we expected so hopefully it stays that way i'm gonna knock on wood yeah same here for you yeah well that's amazing thank you for doing that and you know i was actually about to wear my biden harris shirt but i went with goldberg's <laughs> instead you know keep it keep it new york but uh so talk to me so then you did you do all of the high school in wilmington yes at, i went to new hanover uh, high <laughs> Did I just forget the name of my husband? <laughs> <laughs> I went to Tucker. It's all good. Um, yes, I did. I went to high school here. That's how I heard about School of the Arts, which is it, I became completely obsessed with getting into that school. I didn't oh, get wow. in. For, I auditioned for that school total three times. Did not get in the first two times. No way. Yeah. The first. Well, the first time I had technically missed the deadline, and it was for the high school program. Um, oh, for the which, summer one that gives you credits well, to go? Well, they have a high school for your senior year in high school. You can go to, um, they have like a drama program at School of the Arts for high schoolers, but it's just seniors. Were you there with like Danny McBride and, and those guys? Or? I was there after them. After them? Like I barely missed them. I think they graduated in 2000. So probably. And I think I got there in 2000 or 2001. A little, so then that was before Dane DeHaan then too. I was there with Dane. Oh, you were? Yeah, he was actually, well, I was, I want to say I was a junior or a senior, and he was in the high school program. Oh, wow. Amazing. They're from North Carolina, he and Anna Wood. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I see them. It's like, I, they're in Brooklyn, so when I was in Brooklyn, I would see them on occasion, but he's, yeah, he was, yeah, they were like little kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's like, the, it's the Juilliard of the South, if you will, you know, it's an incredible school. I mean, how, how was your experience there? It was great. I loved it. Yeah. Is, loved is that a BFA program? Yes, but I think they have an MFA program now. I'll have to audition there. What's I've that? done the I've done the like Juilliard, Yale and gotten called back, but now I'm just kind of burnt out on on that. But I don't even know if I want to go to grad school in post COVID world. I don't know how they're all going now. Like what are they doing? Well, so I had I just actually had someone that is a student at Juilliard on the show and they're all virtual. And they're like, I wouldn't want to pay fifty five thousand dollars. That's crazy. To, to be doing they're a model. Like virtual acting school? Yeah. And they're, they're charging the exact same tuition. Even NYU undergrad is doing the same thing where I went. And I mean, there's got to be, I mean, I, I, I think it's criminal personally. I mean, then. Well, I wonder if with a school like that, you still want to go just because you're, you can say you went to Juilliard and you know that, you know, probably by this time, like they're still going to. Do the showcase. Them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I guess that's the real lure of that. But yeah, for an undergrad at NYU, please, kids listening, don't go for fifty-five thousand dollars a year. I yeah. got tons of student debt, but oh. enough of yeah. Talk, so when oh. you were there, did you like talk to me about you know deciding to go to school and and you said you had to audition a couple times because like you know obviously you're you're incredibly talented and you're very beautiful. I imagine you probably could have started working right away. You know. Because you had that credit and you probably could have gotten a North Carolina agent and maybe done the One Tree Hill or John Adams. I, North, I think I had a North Carolina agent. Do you remember who? I don't, but I, I'm pretty, because I definitely auditioned. Like I would drive, I mean, when I was in high school, I would drive to Nashville or I, I don't remember all the places, but I, or Charlotte, like I would drive and audition for wow. commercials and things. So I think I did have an agent, but they just didn't cast much out of Wilmington or yeah. Southeast back then. Now it's different, but yeah, it's crazy how that's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, some people were like, don't go to acting school. I just was always really obsessed with NCSA. I really wanted to go there. I just had this idea. I was fixated on it. And I got waitlisted in when I, the year I graduated high school, I got waitlisted. And so I sort of gave up on it at that point, and I went to New York for eight months. And how, um, how was that experience? It was cool. It was great. And I'm yeah. glad 
I did it. I'm really glad I did it. And then somebody convinced me to re-audition and I re-auditioned and then I got in. And so, and we also had like residency here. So yeah, I don't have the, the, the student debt stuff that like the NYU people have, like, Yeah, so the for-profit like, institution. Well, that, that, that's also amazing that you had those eight months because I think, you know, it should almost be imperative like by law for students to take a gap year before they're allowed to encumber that kind of debt to have some kind of real world experience outside of an education environment to know, yeah. you know, what it's like. So how were those eight months for you? Was that, was that a trying time? Was it a we were great. I think it was like 1999. So New York was a little different back then. Oh, but so it was like right before, you know, it, it got kind of juliana yeah, it felt like, I remember when we went down to, we had a teacher that was a director and he directed something at, because I was going to this weird, I'm almost it's embarrassing to admit, but I went to this weird drama program while I was there called AMDA. Yeah, American Academy of Dramatic I'm Arts. It, Paul I, Rudd went there. That's not weird. <laughs> did he go there? Yeah. Oh, to me, it just felt so like, ugh, that, which is why I only went there for, I think, I want to say it was eight months, but um, we it's had a bit we of a racket. What's that? It's a bit of a racket, the school. Yes, I yeah. feel like it's just yeah. to make money. And yeah. they do have some good teachers. This guy was directing something on the Lower East Side. And when he invited us, you had to go in a group. We, wow. like, it was still the Lower East Side. Was, which is was really like the Lower East Side. Boys and like a party on the street. It was, you You went down there and there were there were bars on windows. And like, you went in a group. Like, you didn't go down there alone. No, even when I moved to New York in 2008, it was still a little like, ugh, you know what I mean? Oh it's so crazy now that it's just like artisanal mayonnaise. You know what I mean? Like, so bizarre. But I know. I don't know when all that happened, but it was definitely different. And I was on the Upper West Side living in this tiny, looked like a prison cell. It was a dorm, but it was probably like 100 square feet or something. And wow. it had a sink in it and like cinder block walls. And they, oh my was, god! Oh no, I had a job. Like it was, it was a good experience. It was a good experience. I think it got. I think it was good for me to have that before I went to NCSA. Yeah, and I'm sure it only made you when you get in that much more hungry because you knew what it was like on the other side. You yeah. know, m most kids don't get that till they get out of school. You right. had that experience before. So yeah. talk to me when when you get in. Then are you just totally all about the work and and submitting yourself to this? you know, the practice or whatever. I don't know what the technique is there or is it multiple? It's a lot of things. Um, at the time it was Gerald Friedman was our Dean, who was this sort of like golden director. I mean, he, he, he really came out of like, he worked with Stella Adler. Um, he was an assistant director for West Side Story. The yeah, he, he, he's just been around forever. He kind of shaped the way Shakespeare is done in this, in this country. Amazing. Um, before, he, before he started directing Shakespeare, it was like we, we tried to do it like the Brits did it. Yeah. Um, and he, he used to, like every, you know, we didn't have, we weren't like a Meisner school or a, this kind of school. It was just... We had different teachers and they gave us different tools and and yes it was terrifying i was definitely i think i was terrified at first yeah. like i had this because i you know i had this idea of what the school was in my mind and i totally turned away i'd been rejected so many times from the school <laughs> so i thought oh my god everybody's gonna be so talented and it's gonna be super intimidating and i was terrified like the first month and then something happened and i just got really um they could they kind of break you down yeah break that, you to make you yeah like that yeah yeah eventually just kind of went away and i was like you better just take risks um which is kind of the 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 rules that i tried to live by while i was there was just to not be safe and then, and then uh, since then out of school, I feel like that's pretty tough to do in the yeah. working world when you're working on network TV shows and stuff. Totally. Like you just do what they tell you. Yeah. Like you're not trying to like challenge everybody on like an NBC show or a CBS yeah. show. Like, yeah. And okay, you want me to smile more? Fine. Like I'll smile more. Yeah. Like, that, that becomes the- Network entertainment's very different than something like Banshee or you know what I mean? Where you sure. can really, yeah, yeah. I totally get what you mean by that. Well then- sure. What for for Trish, What what was the dream? You know, like at that time when you finally got in and you were graduating. Do they do they have a showcase there? They do. They um, we, they we went to NYU to showcase. We oh no to, way! Yeah, that's so funny because NYU doesn't even have a showcase for its undergrads. You're kidding? No, they take a thousand undergrad acting students, and there's no showcase. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. That's a. Are you sure? Well, yeah, you must hundred percent there. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. 
But they, they I guess they're agents, grad agents program. Probably come to agents probably come to the plays and things, right? I, you know, I, I know they do for the grad one. I, I don't know of all my friends, you know, the only friend of mine that's like, you know, doing great right now. Well, I have a lot of that are working, but like, you know, name would be Rachel Brosnahan, who's with oh, Ken. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but she was auditioning there because she had like some Chicago credits. So she oh, was cool. already kind of on her way then. Gotcha. But I don't know anyone that like got signed from a play. You know, most people finish, most people finish NYU and then try to apply for grad school. But then there's a weird rule at NYU where, you know, it's kind of not said, but NYU grad doesn't like taking NYU undergrad because they want to pull from people that study different things. And yeah. Oh, that's, that's, I can't believe that NYU with the, the kind of tuition they have doesn't have a showcase. Oh, trust me. I've had, it's part of the reason I have a podcast for actors to understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's upsetting. Like, yeah, yeah, it is really upsetting. And it took me a long time to get rep, you know. it's But, you know, if anything, you know, it made me probably a lot more humble and less of a dick, you know. It would have yeah, been easy. sure. So, you have so, to, like. Yeah, but how about you? So when you did New York and already having that experience, did you feel a calling back to that city? Or was LA interesting to you as well? We didn't, when I graduated school at NCSA, we didn't even think of LA as an option. We didn't showcase really? there. They do, they, show, they showcase there now and people move there now. But when I was there, it was not an option. Like they didn't, the, all of our connections were with New York. Gerald's connections were with New York. Theater was in New York. So we showcased in New York we got agents or we didn't. Some people yeah. didn't, some people did. Um, and then we just moved to New York. Every single person from the school moved to New York. Did you we get like an apartment class. together? What's that? Did a few yes. of you get, oh, that's amazing. So I lived with, do you know Anna Camp? Yeah. From Pitch Perfect. I yeah, she's great. Camp and another guy in my class whose name was Tom Sawyer. No way. So we all lived together <laughs> in Washington Heights. I had a living room I stayed in the living room basically and put a curtain up and like Anna had a bedroom and Tom had a bedroom and I was <laughs> it's like we were we were basically making a two bedroom into a three bedroom. That's in amazing. Washington Heights. I think our rent divided three ways ended up being like 350 a person. Oh per month. god, <laughs> the dream time of New York. I was <laughs> talking was, to it, Yeah. James Batchel was telling me, you know, he used to just like go from apartment to apartment and they'll reside for like 200 bucks. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. Yeah. That, that New York, you know, I, I I came in right as like the East Village and Lower East Side were fully getting gentrified. But then talk to me, when, when you were in New York at that time, you know, the landscape was probably a lot different. It was it was all network shows and and, and plays and, you know. Yeah, it was definitely a ton of network. Like pilot season was, was network TV and the CW. Um, yeah, I mean, cable was not as big of a thing back then. Although I think I did, I think one of my first jobs was a, uh, it was a pilot for Showtime, Jonathan Ames. Oh, Jonathan nice. Ames, who wrote um, Born to Death. And God, why am I like, I'm trying to remember the movie that he just wrote. I'm forgetting it. But anyway, it was, it was his first TV show and he was playing himself. And that was my first pilot that I ever did. And it was for Showtime. And this was pre-Weeds. So Showtime wow. was before, like, what, what's Showtime? Yeah. I mean, there wasn't really a lot on Showtime. At that time, it was just like HBO was the only one that kind of took that, you know, content. Yeah. It was like yeah, Oz and the Sopranos. To compete, but, um, and yeah, like at that point, I don't think there was anything good on Showtime. It, that's, yeah, not much now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, talk to me, you know, what, when you got to New York, were you interested in doing Film and TV, or was it film, TV, theater, or was it just theater? Where was your head at? I had an agent and a manager. I was actually with a really fancy agent. I was with Endeavor before they became William Morris Endeavor. Wow. Um, and so it was all TV and film. Like every audition I went in for, and I had a ton of auditions. I was so busy, and it was all TV and film. And my friends were doing like regional theater and going yeah. out for, you know, a Shaw play in Baltimore. And I wasn't doing any of that. So I think I actually kind of missed out because I was auditioning for stuff in the film and TV world that I just wasn't really appropriate for. Like these were, you know, I don't know, just, it felt like it was out of reach. It felt like over it, super competitive roles that yeah. hire more established people in. Um, 
so that was the grind for me for a long time was just like going in for things and not getting things. <laughs> it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there now. I, mean, I did an audition for guest spots really until it was just, it was like they were lead roles in movies and TV shows. Oh, so you were going up against like the A-list names, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, as, it, as some of the bigger agents tend to do, you know, you, you go in for Spider-Man, you go in for... You they know try what I, to see, yes, exactly. Like they yeah. try to see if they can like turn you into a star overnight, I think. And then when yeah. they realize that like that's hard and doesn't happen to very many people, they drop you. So I eventually got dropped. <laughs> um, and then the crazy thing was I went with and I got a different agent. And a month later, I booked my first like network pilot, which was Canterbury's Law, which ended Amazing. up getting canceled pretty early on. But it was still a great experience. And I didn't have to cater anymore after that. Well, well so. I know that well. Oh God, that's why I started a podcast. I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's such a brutal. Talk to me about you know what was interesting to you. You know, like where did you kind of positioning wise want to see yourself? Was it just did you want to get a show and get that kind of like reoccurring and then hopefully move up to series regular, or were you just trying to get as many things as you could? I think that when I graduated, I just, I think I felt like my agents were my parents or something. And I yeah. was just supposed to kind of do what they told me. Cause I did get offered an understudy role on a Broadway show. Um, I had, I had, a, I, I had auditioned for the lead. They cast it and then they offered me the understudy for the lead. Wow. And I thought that was like the biggest deal in the world. And I, yeah. went, I was like, why can't I do this? And my agents, my reps were like, no, absolutely not. You're not going to do an understudy job. Oh um, God. Yeah, and that so it was kind just, of backfired in a way, you know, I having was, the yeah, a little bit. I feel like I because, for example, Anna, who I lived with at the time, she was with an agent called Talent Works, and they were really all about like building your career and giving you experience. So she she definitely auditioned for TV shows, but she was also she also did a lot of regional theater and wow. and like off off Broadway theater. And then it was doing a play at um, she did a play at the Humana Festival. Um, Teresa Rebeck's the scene. And oh, wow. that, the Humana Festival is happens right during pilot season. Like this is an example of just like, you don't need like the fanciest agents in the world. But a lot of agents would say like, absolutely not. Like you're not going to the Humana Festival for no money during pilot yeah. season, especially if you look like Anna, you know, yeah. you're, you're, we're gonna like t just send you to the CW every day. Yeah. Um, but they wanted her to do it. She wanted to do it. It was like a great, amazing role for her. That play ended up at second stage a year later, they recast two of the leads, but they kept Anna in her role. And oh, that nice. was where Alan Ball saw, I think Alan Ball saw Anna in that play. And then immediately from that play, like cast her in True Blood. Wow. So it's just kind of, yeah, it's like do all those things. And I felt yeah. like, I felt like in some ways I was trying to get the, like these massive roles without having built that foundation underneath. Of doing I, the co-star, guest star, reoccurring, and then, you know, yeah, having, yeah. I, so, sometimes when you're with like a middle size or even a smaller agency, like you you go out for all that, all that great, and you get to do great theater. And, yeah. and you know, you get to do, I mean, she was doing, I think she did Importance of Being Earnest. She did some off-Broadway. So she did a lot of theater before she started working in television. And she still does do theater all the time. So oh. that's been that's been something my biggest frustration is like not being able to work in theater. I really feel like it's just something that I don't have the connections to. I don't have that network of people who bring me back in for things. Like I do in TV and film. I feel like the TV casting directors at this point, yeah, they'll see they all know. Like it's yeah. not a huge problem like getting in for things. Sig, Sig, Dave, Miguel, and Steve Vincent, two of my closest friends, you know, they, they love you and they talk about you yeah. all the time and they've taught me and been so good to me. And, and, you know, like I hear you're one of the best auditioners in the game. Well, I'm so glad to hear <laughs> you say that because I never know. And I, if you based it off of how much I work and audition, I, I always feel like I must not be very good at it because I feel like I audition. You're one of the best. So I so much and I don't, and I get, you know, I get not going further all the time, not going further, not going further. They have options. But I think it's that still that game of like, they make offers to people. Yeah. And half the crap we audition for is already offered or in, is intending to be offered to somebody else. So. So then did you start doing like indie auditions once you kind of found a more middle ground agent, like cold weather and things like that with, because no, I imagine. All people from my school. No way. Yeah, Aaron Katz went to film school and I did a lot of student films at North Carolina School of the Arts. So I made those connections. My world, my experience in indie film completely started with North Carolina School of the Arts. 
That's so beautiful. Cause like I hear the same thing from Danny McBride and it just seems like there's such yeah. like a, 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 a community vibe there, even after you graduate, which, you know, yeah. most schools, you know, NYU is like, yeah, it's a fucking war dude. See, see on the battlefield, you know what I mean? We're there. It's like a real community. That's so beautiful. Yeah. The film school. And I think they work with the drama school even more now. Um, but when I was there, it was a little bit separated. Um, they didn't encourage us to do, they didn't make it super easy for us to do student films because the student films all happened on the weekends and we had rehearsals on the weekends. Um, so we had to get permission, but I ended up doing, I lived with film students. I ended up doing like 10 student films and all of those people I worked with at school, all of them as when they started making stuff would call me because it was just, oh, we're making this movie, we can't pay you. And I was like, of course I wanna do this. Yeah. And now some of them are really successful. Like Brett Haley, um, I don't know if you know him. He, he wrote and directed The Hero, um, I'll See You In My Dreams. Uh, what's the last one? I can't believe <laughs> oh, I'm deviant. <laughs> I produce these, I'm like, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name. <laughs> like Offerman in it. Anyway, he's, he's, he's like making movies for Netflix now. And Aaron obviously is, is making a lot of stuff. I mean, there's, it's been fun to kind of like grow up with people in that way. But now I'm, I feel like I'm not famous enough for them to hire me. So when they get like really big, they call. Are you they, kidding? They need famous people to finance their films. Do you know how many people reached out to me after the Anthony Starr episode and said, can you please get Trias Kelly done? I've been like, I've been trying to get her for like six months. Do you know really? how many people messaged me asking for you personally? They really? were like, it would be a dream come true if you have her on the show. That is I'd, so I'd, I'd I you think, would, just I like, think you're uh, severely undervaluing yourself. And I love that because I'm humble too. We need and, to hang out more. Yeah, we I'm do. Really I'm going gonna, gonna to motivate you. I'm going to call you every day and tell you. No, but that. honestly, when I get back to New York, we because we, you seem like you're a total acting nerd too. And oh, the like biggest. That. We need to do, I, I do these, I organize these classes with a retired NCSA teacher who was one of our favorite teachers. I organize Please. them once or twice a year and they're super fun and we just work on whatever plays we want to work on. Please, and, I'm there. Yeah, I'll give you my number at the end of this. We'll hang and out. a lot of the directors take them as well. Like Brett yeah. Bailey takes the class. I mean, we've had a lot of people that they take it because it's just they want to learn how to talk to actors. I'm going to, I don't think Sig will mind me saying this, but he talks about you in class all the time. So right. I think you should come into one of his classes, well, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sig, <laughs> come on, man. Let's bring Trieste. What'd you say? Yeah, he's so nice. Oh, him and Steve are the best. They've been yeah. so kind to me, you know. But so talk to me then. When when you started doing those things and, and cold weather and even though you weren't making money, I imagine that that kind of gave you material and awareness, you know, mm -hmm. right? Even, you know, doing the festival circuit, even if it's not Sundance, you get the connections mm -hmm. and you get to shake hands. Did that start opening other doors for you and meeting Definitely. other filmmakers? It, it mostly, well, it gave me experience, which was great, but it also like opened the door to do a lot of other really super low budget indies that didn't pay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's all I've done in my career so far. <laughs> yeah, when you don't have any money and you're trying to make like a free movie, like call Trieste, like she'll do anything for free. Um, but those, but the films are, they were so low budget that they weren't about to hire a casting director. And then of course, when you go around to all these festivals and especially the smaller festivals, yeah. you meet directors at the smaller festivals so yeah you know, people who have films at you know bigger festivals but it's like they're at the trip the tail end of their festival run and you hang out you get drunk with them and that became the best way to really just work I mean I was it's I, I was in my 20s and I didn't have any reason not to go to festivals when they invited me yeah so I just went to everything even the small ones and you know it's you're there for a few days you see filmmakers films you hang out you go to the little events and you like drink the free alcohol with them like it just ends up being a great way and then it's six months later when they're making something they call, they you. call you yeah totally that makes complete sense and and talk to me then you know because like I know you did like you know the rite of passages like law and order and other procedurals after you know Canterbury's law what was the thing that kind of like cha changed it was it united 93 that was the was that the thing that kind of like opened the world up to to bigger and bigger film and TV projects for you or? Honestly, what? no, I feel like it's been like this. It's just been like some years are great and I've worked consistently. I mean, United 93 was an awesome experience but it definitely didn't set any, it was a good, it was a good experience. I don't think it helped necessarily with me getting other roles because yeah. it really 
I mean, the way the film is, I, it's, well, it's just a, a cast of at least 50 people, yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. A lot of improvising and, and things. And so you don't, you're, it, nobody's really highlighted in the film um, because it was about like the plane and what happened and this horrible tragedy. So I don't think that was a, like what started it. I don't, Canterbury's Law was awesome and paid really well. But then as soon as we were finished, I went to LA thinking like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm bona fide. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like I'm gonna, yeah. And then yeah. I did actually, after Canterbury's Law, I did book a pilot that was a really cool pilot and didn't it didn't go, um, but it had Rosamund Pike in it. Oh man. And it had um, Dennis O'Hare, Marsha Gay Harden. Oh, I love Dennis. He's the best. Cole Hauser was in it. Like Cole you know, Hauser, man. Awesome. I love Cole Hauser. Oh, one of the most undervalued actors working right now. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. I'm so happy um, Yellowstone's doing well for him. I know. That's just yeah. pretty cool. I would yeah. love to do a show like that. I just, I've gone in. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to get on Taylor Sheridan's radar for so long, but that's another yeah. story. Yeah. You know, I could see you in a show like that riding a horse. Or yeah, I had Hassie <laughs> Harrison who's doing that on now. But that, I guess with the, you know how it is with the local hire stuff. They want to do the Montana thing and they're not going to, you know. You, yeah. Especially for me or someone who's got indie credits. You know what it's like. They're it's all politics and and yeah totally. so, but so then talk to me what was the thing because obviously I know you booked Banshee and that really you know was amazing but there were some things before that what what were the things that were essentially like stress I don't have to work my catering job anymore I'm done was there was there a moment of that or do you remember that I moment I think I mean I've had horrible years and I've had good years but I think it was probably like it was, it was probably Canterbury's Law just because it was a network show and you know then i did another pilot and then i then it was easier to get maybe smaller things like guest spots and stuff like that yeah um after but it was still it was still a grind I, like i went to la after canterbury's and basically for a year didn't work so being the working class actor i'm you know yeah I, I, yeah, I, yeah i didn't work for a year but because of canterbury's and because of maybe something else i did maybe another pilot um, I had enough money to like sit out that year and not get, have like a kind of a restaurant job. Yeah. And then I moved back to New York and I think it was like a month or two after I moved back to New York, I got Banshee. Wow. Yeah. And that, oh, and, what, and what are the odds, after you know? A year, after pretty much a year of not working. And, so and a miracle job. And, 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 you know, cause I had Anthony on and I had Hoon on, you know, like that was such an interesting time because that was when Cinemax was really trying to reinvent their brand as, as a destination for content. Right. So when that was pitched to you, you know, what, did you have an idea of what you were getting involved in or, or not at all? No, I didn't. And yeah. I was kind of surprised when I started reading more episodes. I was like, oh shit, like, whoa, this is really- Not awful. bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to go back to North Carolina. There was some conflict on occasion. <laughs> 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 but it was really fun. I actually had a great, I mean, it was like summer camp. I mean, every, the cast was just, we're, we're still, I mean, I call them all the time. We still hang out all the time. I lived with Lily Simmons when oh, we were man. shooting. Wow. Um, for two, was it cool going back to North Carolina and being on this big show? It was so fun to be in Charlotte too. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. We had a great time. I mean, we just, it was summer camp. Like we didn't know anybody else in town. So we hung out with each other every day. And and talk to me about Siobhan, Siobhan, am I saying that right? I always fuck up that name. Siobhan, they say- Siobhan. Siobhan. In succession, it's Siobhan, and then and that one yeah. was, yeah. So talk to me about that character, because you're so amazing as that, and, and you kind of start, you know, it starts as like, a, you think there's going to be a chemistry, but she rejects them, and then it kind of builds into this love thing that's kind of like a love triangle, and then becomes like an actual love, like, what and- but it's also an action show at the same time. Like, yeah. what was it like filming that? You know, because it's kind of, in the most best sense of the term, it's kind of all over the place. Yes, it was really fun. We had, it was great. We had personal trainers. Wow. So we all got really fit. And then we had stunt training. So it was like exercise. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, CrossFit. <laughs> Anthony worked every day and had to do fight scenes once a week. So he was always like injured and tired, but the rest of us maybe worked, you know, on a normal episode, like two or three days a week, maybe. And then on a really busy episode, maybe we would work every day. But um, we, we never saw him unless we were on set. So wow. he was, he was like the only one that wasn't really like, he was just busy and tired and injured all the time. 
<laughs> I mean, not really. I mean, the first day of shooting the pilot, he they he busted his lip and doing a stunt. Somebody like whacked his whacked their head into his face. He had I think six stitches in his lip the oh, first man. day of shooting, and they didn't stop shooting. Yeah, he he told me nobody ever asked him if he could throw a punch. You know what I mean? They just gave him the yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, he was he was like he worked so hard, and they just. I mean, I don't know how his body held together. Because after doing one of those, the fight, they really like wanted the actors to do the stunts. It wasn't like most, most shows don't want that. because they Yeah, don't because of insurance actors. reasons. And and because, you know, if you have an injured actor, then suddenly, like, what do you... Production ends. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So was that a fun time in your life? Like, you know, serendipitously really coming back to North Carolina, you're yeah. a series regular on this awesome Cinemax show, you know, like, yeah. I know domestically it didn't do what the network hoped but internationally it was a smash hit you know and and that much I mean did that really yeah. kind of open doors for you was that was that the project um, then I mean yeah like when because yeah no I think it got me more cop stuff and and I feel like when I was shooting Banshee I did another cop type role on this show Believe that didn't end up going it was on the air, I think it had 13 episodes, but I had a big recurring on that, like on the off season of Banshee. And it was a kind of CIA, FBI type role. And then yeah. after Banshee, Blind Spot. So I think it helped with cop shit. Well, it's because you were so amazing in that. And I think, you know, the one thing we all know about Hollywood is they like to see someone do something really well and then send them seven more scripts that are the exact same thing, you know, and it's- Yeah, I don't know if they like sent me seven more scripts. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was nice because I think yeah people are like okay cool she can do that like we you know we have a New York recurring role called Trieste to play this FBI person. Well, and uh, you know obviously unlike Banshee it's a little bit more rock and roll and you can say fuck and shit but yes. on a network show it's exposition procedural dialogue you know like police terms and you're so amazing at bringing truth to those and I still to this day when I when I go in for like Jonathan Strauss or something I struggle with like. We got an APB, on, you know, like, how are you able to bring truth to all those, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're seeing, but I don't think- You're I so do. good. You can't, I, I need to like make, I'm going to watch stuff with you and I'm just going to give you like live commentary. Well, okay. Those <laughs> kind of lines though, when I, I, what do I do? Yeah. Cause it's hard because you always just sound like an actor robot when you're saying them. Yeah. I think it's just, I just try to get my mouth around it and like, I try to run the line so much so I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Because that's the hardest thing is when you show up with, the, with the, that kind of like the doctor shit or the lawyer shit. It's, it's, yeah, it's, you get like tangled up really fast. To, the, to this day, do you, do you like 150% off book? Do you work with a, you know, you mentioned you have that wonderful guy that leads the class that you do. Do you, do you work with a coach or do you do it yourself? So um, I have, I think, when's the last time I worked with a coach? I've definitely had a couple auditions where I thought maybe I should call a coach and do yeah. this, but you know, I think it's good because you ask questions and it maybe helps you see a side of things, but I don't totally. always agree with the coach stuff because I feel like it's just somebody's giving you another choice. Yeah. And like, what if you're, and maybe your instincts are probably the better guide. Yeah. Um, but I do like working on things and going, like, I love working in class, working on plays, um, yeah. because you get to really go deeper, which yeah. on, I think often with auditions, you're just on this like results thing. Like, how do I achieve this end results overnight, which can yeah. become not creative. And, and doing something from Banshee to Blind Spot was that, you know, I mean, obviously, I know that shows a massive hit and a lot of Americans watch it. Was that a fun time being on? It was really fun. I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I really liked. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to miss it because that was that was kind of consistent. I think we I mean, I did, it wasn't I didn't have a huge role every season, mm. but um, it was nice to just get a call like before season and hey, you're going to do like a few episodes. Um, and also, I know Martin. I've worked with Martin before. He's the showrunner creator, and he's just so nice and incredible to work for. Amazing. Um, yeah, it was great, and it was a few blocks from my house. Oh, so right. So yeah, it was it was really fun working on that. But a, it, another show where yeah, there's a lot of that FBI jargon. Yeah. Um, I like though. I it wasn't as bland though. I mean, I, I shouldn't say bland. I just mean they there was a lot of character stuff that also I mean I had the thing with Sully's character so there was more for me to do yeah like I wasn't just the like exposition 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 yeah. yeah that stuff is really hard um 
because I've done stuff like that before we were auditioning and you're just that exposition character. And I think that's a lot harder. And then talk to me about something like Push, you know, like you're, you're an amazing actress and you've had all these credits and you do this short film. Like how, how did that come your way? And that's so cool that you said yes to that. Huh? Okay. Really? Yeah. They were Another from, one. Oh my I, God. I Will, and now Will is making a huge movie with, what's her name? Claire Foy. Oh, no way. So he had, I was in, Will was directing, um, music videos a lot. God, I gotta go to NCSA. What the fuck? I know. Yeah. Cool. The film people are really, they're, you know, that was one of my short films because I'm like a big Vimeo nerd. Sometimes I'll just go watch the staff picks and that was one of them. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's Trieste. I know. Will is amazing. And Will and Car Carrie, his wife, Carrie Krauss, they, they, they both directed that together and wrote it. And um, they have a film that they're, I don't know when, when they're making it, but Claire Foy's attached to it and they wrote it together. It's called Dust. Wow. I hope I'm, I'm no, because there's been stuff on Hollywood Reporter about it. So I'm not like, I'm allowed to talk about it. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a long road for will i mean he was really trying to like break out of the music video thing um yeah. and I think that's part of why he made that that short yeah was because he wanted to do something that wasn't a music video and, and it was it was a big hit i mean open, you know uh, yeah yeah he's great he's so talented like super super talented and they're all people i went to i shot we did student films together Wow. And then my roommate at the time was Zoe, the DP, who now shoots The Handmaid's Tale and has won an Emmy or got nominated for Emmys. You know everyone. Well, <laughs> I love it. From my school, like yeah. filmmakers and actors from my school that eventually it's just after, you know, it was like a grind for the first 10 years and now everybody's, everybody's kind of like coming up. So yeah, so you were doing Blind Spot and you were doing other indie things, you know, so talk to me. Was that... Was, was, yeah. was I mean, that cool? Somebody to, calls me again. If somebody's making a no budget film, they just, <laughs> I'll say yes to it. I mean, I will. I'll, I say yes to anything. What 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 makes you say yes? Is it script? Is it is it director? Is it amalgamation of of everything? Yeah, like sometimes there's a really great script. Sometimes it's just yeah, I'm not doing anything else. I'll do this. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'll and, be honest. It's not like they're no, all. No, no, I, I get it, man. I, and then, you know, as you've kind of flexed up and, you know, obviously you're with the great Ken Lee now, have you been able to kind of, I mean, obviously March kind of tore the world apart yeah. and we're in a really dark place, but, you know, have you started to get on, you know, like the public and other kind of theater, you know, New York theater workshop, like things or Broadway or any of those radars? Like, was is that on your to do you know one of those I don't think I'm on their radar at all <laughs> what no way you're one of the best in New York I don't audition for does Sig does he uh because maybe he should bring me in for some plays if yeah like so I don't think they cast plays but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pick up a side job as casting no, director I should no I've actually that that's something I'm always kind of trying to do like how do I get in this world yeah especially because you have this amazing so, acting class and you, you seem like you take it so seriously and your energy I could I, you would radiate on the stage I would I love to like see I would be good in theater and I just think I'm not in that world and people are like oh she does network tv like I don't well, know that, I mean I I've struggled myself to to break into that world because you know speaking of like you know pedigree you know a, a lot of it is the Yale and the Juilliard and the yeah. you know the those MFA kids, those are the people they see first. And only then, you know, unless they can't find a celebrity, do they start opening it up to, yeah. to equity. And, and even and if you're not, and then if you're not equity, you have to wait in a 10 hour line for something that you probably won't even get a chance to do. That's so, true. you know, it's, it's kind of that you can't work until you've worked conundrum yes, all over that's again. How, that's definitely, that's definitely how I feel about it is it's just been, it's like, I don't have the, I don't have those connections and the people who do my friends who do theater I, have a, I mean, I have plenty of friends who just do theater and are dying to get into TV. I'm like, you know, in a normal yeah. theater, New York is shooting like 40 shows. It's like, to, you know, there, I feel like there's so much television usually happening in, happening in New York. Yeah. Um, that it's, I find it, I think it's easier to work in New York than LA for sure. I agree. I went to, I, I moved to LA. There. I made it six months and I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? This is a horrible idea. And I moved yeah. back. Yeah. So then as you progress and in, in, in blind spot, I mean, I know we're, we're not at the greatest time in the world, you know, so what, what's, you know, the last few months, what's kept you buoyed? What have you done to, to stay busy and, and I mean, keep this yourself? Volunteer work for New Hanover Democratic Party has like kept me super busy the last Yeah, let's talk month about that. Um, that's been fun. But before that, we were kind of moving around a lot. I went to Utah, then we were in the mountains in North Carolina. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, 
that's a, I didn't, I wasn't one of these people that took, you know, Zoom acting classes. Like I thought about it, but I didn't really do it. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? I, I mean, have, have you done it? I probably will now. Because I just had a, two auditions this week and I, I had a coaching session over Zoom. That was my first time okay. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Dope sick. Hopefully if I get it, this is, you know, but uh, yeah. Knock I'll on wood. For you. Oh, me too. <laughs> I hope, man. One of these days, something's got to break. You know it how will. it goes. Stay, yeah. I think stay in New York. I think New York is the easier place. I really do. So, so, you know, what, you know, we're in a really tough time. And creatively, you said, you know, Blind Spot ended then. I imagine you probably don't want to do a network show again, like at this oh, point. Oh, I do. You do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would prefer a cable. I would prefer yeah. like a really cool role in a cable show. But I, um, but no, I would, I would love to do network TV. I like the stability of network TV. I like that it turns into kind of a, like a job job, like yeah. the hours kind of stay consistent. Yeah. That, you know, what your schedule is going to be like, and you don't have to go to the Czech Republic for a year and then yeah. be out of work again. And then, yeah. And any, yeah. any work has been, I, I've never worked on anything that I haven't had some fun, even stuff that I didn't like, like, I, Oh my God, these lines are horrible. Like you end up having a good time. Yeah, yeah. That's Anthony and I fun. talked about this. We call it, we learned a lot from that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, like, it ends up yeah. being fun. Like it work, you you work it out. It ends up being fun. And if it's not, then I don't know. Like you have to figure out a way to make it fun. <laughs> well, I feel like I need to fucking write the play that's gonna break you in. I'm gonna do like a one woman, okay, one one bro show. You know, <laughs> like maybe we'll a figure two it. person. Yeah, I want to do like a well, model. Two well, that, that's right. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Um, we'll talk in person. But okay, yeah, no, definitely. When I'm yeah. back in New York, we should just meet up in person. And, oh, for sure, we will. We'll but so during this time, you know, you said you mentioned you work for the Democratic Party. How have you managed to stay inspired? You know, that's something I talk to every guest about because it's hard. You know, obviously, pun intended, not caving to despair. And what what has kept you buoyed during this time? Well, during this time. I think my focus has been, yeah, like I will, I would go crazy if I wasn't doing some kind of volunteer work. I was so angry and it's like, you can just check the news yeah. all day and get angrier and angrier and angrier yeah. and like imagine revenge scenarios in your head, or you can just get really busy and get involved and like start helping in ways. I mean, there's so much stuff to do. Like, and, and, and we also had the ability that we could come down here and yeah new people here I mean I lived here for a long time is that um, the goal to move back there or just to be able to go back and forth we have a place here now I mean we didn't buy a place we're running a place but yeah. um, I think yeah I don't know I think I'm just gonna play it by ear it's really nice I'm really loving being here I bought a car I haven't bought a, I haven't had a car for I mean probably since I went to college in North um, Carolina Prius I have a Mitsubishi Mirage <laughs> oh it's a I'm, stick shift <laughs> oh, do you like that? I mean, it's not ideal. <laughs> yeah, why stick? It was cheap. <laughs> yeah, I guess they are cheaper now. They're trying to stop making them. They're definitely cheaper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely- you probably can't. Well, at least you can't text and drive. You cannot. Text yeah. And drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't do anything and drive. Yeah, yeah, you really can't. You really can't. <laughs> and how, how is it going in in the Democratic thing? And and it it's you know, say, it's, it's super fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. That's yeah, so wonderful. It's fun. There's so much energy and it's interesting being in a swing state. And it really, especially this county is very just crazily enthusiastic on both sides. So you meet people who are just, I mean, they've got like Biden flags on their trucks and then oh, wow. like Trump shit on their boats and, 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 and your neighbors are Trump supporters. You have to like coexist with people whose political beliefs you've, you know, would disparage on social media. Yeah. Um, but you can't, it's the, the nice thing is in person, you can't really do that. It's, you have to, you know, you have to like people and, and, yeah. and not like argue all the time. So, I mean, be civil, literally, you know? Yeah. 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 And, it, and, and it's interesting. There isn't a lot of drama, like that you have these, like d- the Biden tents and the um, Trump tents right next to each other. And they're like greeter tents before people go into the polls and they're handing out sample ballots and stuff. And we kind of, I kind of thought, God, oh, this is like going to be really contentious. Yeah. There's going to be like proud lot, boys the there. Drama. Yeah. No, nothing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, maybe occasional little like obnoxious things here and there, but I think people in this state, especially this particular county, like they're used to living next to each other. And, yeah. and in, in, you get, you're in a place like Brooklyn, you would never meet somebody who had like a Trump sign on their window. No, you, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. And in July, I finally went home 
for the first time since the pandemic to see the statues be taken down on, on Monument Avenue, all the oh, Robert, e, uh, Robert E. Lee is still up, but you know, Stonewall Jackson and all the other really, really racist ones are all gone. The only one that's left is Robert E. Lee. And it's turned into this massive, beautiful Black Lives Matter. Have you been to Berlin? It kind of reminds me of the, the Berlin Wall, you know, how there's like spray paint everywhere. And it's like oh, wow. this really been, fraught, yeah. intense reminder. I mean, I, if, if you and your boyfriend have a second to go up there, I, yeah, I highly recommend I seeing so. it and experiencing that before it, it, it probably gets taken down. But that's amazing that you're able to contribute. I have so much like appreciation for that because I'm, I'm too lazy. I, I really should no, do it. Not. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. It, it didn't. No, definitely not. We we've just been nomadic all year, and I don't have a job or kids right now. So I figured, and I just have a lot of anger. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, me too. Yeah, just being pissed off all day. Yeah, I think that talking to you know wonderful people like yourself keeps me buoyed and it allows me to yeah. So then you know what what advice would you have for those listening that are you know the young Trias maybe that didn't get into North Carolina in their first couple of tries and are here in New York working that catering job? You know, I know that's a really loaded question, but you know, any, any words of wisdom or advice you would have for them? Just, I think what you were saying, uh, like staying inspired, seeing theater, I mean, yeah. you can't do that now. So that's always how, that's always been my general rule in New York when I've gotten really, really tired of being an actor. And it's part of why I moved back to New York after I was in LA for a year is I, I just needed to see theater. Even though yeah. I'm not doing it, it was great to see it and just know that it exists and that people are doing that kind of work and having ideas and you know talking about things um, with more nuance and depth than you would get in a, in, in, in a lot of TV shows. Yeah. And I, that, that's always kept me going. And then the classes, I feel like if you're in a good class, like that really keeps you, like work begets work. Yeah, I got to um, join your class. I left my yes, shitty one. I'm you coming. Should. Yeah, I have a lot like people take it and kind of yeah. We have a lot of people that just consistently take it because it is. It's really it's good. It's like, it just keeps you grounded. Well, and I think you know the thing that you know actors, a lot of cocky actors, at least n none that have been on the show. You know, they settle and they get really comfortable. You know what I mean? It's like we can always be better and we can always be refreshing and by engaging with, you know, in a scene that maybe you're not right for. Like I did this thing with Kathleen Turner. She was like, I want you guys to choose things that you're not right for. And I did Romeo because I would never play Romeo. You know what I mean? And wow, yeah. it's, it's just interesting doing that because that that's how you become better. You know yeah. what I mean? And then yeah. I after that, I auditioned and I started getting, you know, better and better things. And I think that's why you're such an amazing actress is because you're so you're constantly immersed in it, Trieste, and th that's, that's yeah. so beautiful, and that inspires me so much. You're and so it, sweet. I hope we can work together sometime. Oh, we're, I'm going to write your play, and I'm going to win what? you the Tony, or, and I'll, yeah. I'll write a small role for myself, <laughs> you know, selfishly, just, but it'll be about you. If, <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, but no. It'll be um, about but, Brian and Trieste trying to break into Broadway, and then we write a play. It'll be very yeah. meta. And the final scene will be us in the audience reflecting or at on the least play. In our acting class. We yeah. can write that play in our in our acting class too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we'll transcribe this podcast into a scene. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, I have so much love for you, and it, it's 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 been amazing talking to you. And I know it's. I'm so happy to meet you. I can't yeah. wait to meet you in person. And thank yeah. you. I really feel touched, and I really appreciate your just your so um, and your kind words. You're really sweet. <laughs> And and I don't I don't know it's, we can cut this if you don't want them to but if you if you do because it sounds like you're you're very committed to to public service what's the best way for people to to stay in touch with all the wonderful things that you're doing do you have an Instagram yes definitely like yeah. Instagram Twitter um, yeah I think Instagram's great if they yeah I mean Instagram all right awesome it'll <laughs> it'll it'll, it'll be Instagram. If anybody wants to get involved, though, they should. They can DM me on either Twitter or Instagram. Like, I check everything. And if anybody wants to get involved or if they're in North Carolina, like, d definitely come out and, you know, volunteer with me and Aiden over here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is he, is he on? Bring him on. This is my friend who's volunteering. He's here to volunteer. Hey, also. man. Hey, nice hair. Oh, <laughs> Doreen Gray over there. Look at that. He's, he's also an actor and he's in town for a few days volunteering and we've been, ah. we've been taping each other. Cause Is that a Metallica shirt? No, it's a Vassar. Oh. Shirt. oh, it's an Ivy League. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know. It sounds great, man. It sounds awesome. We well, have, we've been taping, we've been having like actor life in here, which has actually kind of yeah. been fun because I haven't had, like we, you know, I had two auditions this week as well. And that's been like the busiest week I've had in months. So I am thrilled to announce that An Actor Despairs is partnering with a wonderful CBD company called Kind Farms. Everyone out there has heard of CBD. I started taking it a few years ago when I first started getting sober and to help with my anxiety. Sadly, as one can do, I was overtraining in the gym and a friend recommended a topical and a tincture to help with the pain. I tried it. It was okay. However, recently, I was introduced to a product that has really changed my life. Not only has it helped me with anxiety, but I am stronger than I have ever been. I'm able to carry out lifts my body used to prevent me from doing. Kind Farm products have single-handedly changed my life athletically and personally. They utilize 100% local licensed farmers, organic cultivation, and CO2 extraction for superior CBD. Kind Farms is turning CBD to a kind alternative to pharmaceuticals. Let's transform tobacco row into hemp row. If you want to get involved, please reach out. Together, we can make a difference. You can use my code RYAN10 for 10% off. You can find them on Instagram at Kind Farms Inc. All one word. That's K I N D P H A R M S I N C. And their website is kindfarmsinc.com. Once again, my code for 10% off is Ryan10.